Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the annual Frog Conference. Uh, my name's Lucy, uh, Lucy Evans. I'm the Chief Customer Officer here at Frog, and it's lovely to see so many familiar and new faces. Um, I'm going to run through a little bit of housekeeping in the agenda first, and then I will hand over to our Managing Director. So for those of you who are following us on Twitter, it's hashtag Frog 21. You'll have already noticed, and I can see a few of you are chatting on the chat chat channel. Please keep the chat moving, talk to each other, ask questions. There is a specific questions channel on the right hand side of your panel if you've got something that you want to ask one of our team privately. However, the, the chat will be monitored throughout um, this, this uh, presentation today. So, um, a quick uh, run through of the agenda. Um, I'll be handing over shortly to Gareth Davis, our, our MD and our founder of Frog. Um, then we'll be doing, as we always do, a little bit of exciting news about what's coming next in our development uh, by Graham Quince. We have a dedicated section to talk about the new Frog development platform. We'll then be joined by Sarah Birch from River Tees Multi Academy Trust. Uh, then we have a panel discussion hosted by Mark Anderson. Because it's quite a long time to be sat in front of the oral PC, um, we'll have a very short comfort break. And then we will start the first of our trilogy of webinars. And this is all about including parents in the child's learning journey. So I'm hoping now that Gareth is getting ready to come and join me on stage. Um, and hopefully, um, I know he's had a couple of issues with his camera this morning, so I'm hoping we'll get to see him. And if possible, uh, Chris, are you able to bring Gareth on stage for this morning's welcome? Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to, to see us today. Um, I'm going to jump straight into it. I've just got 10 minutes and lots of pictures of what you guys have been doing over the last uh, year or two to share with you. So back in 2020, uh, you guys were furiously planning in preparation for, for what was back then completely unknown. Um, and really, I just want to show what you've done, but not, not really to congratulate ourselves for how we coped with it last year, but more, more a lot of those things have stuck. A lot of those things schools are still doing, even though they've gone, they've gone back into the classroom. And that's around areas like remote teaching with online resources, uh, involving parents. Uh, how do we make sure the kids don't fall through the cracks when they're not in the classroom? And how do we know that the kids and the teachers are doing, doing okay? And I'll, I'll cover that last point quick before we get into the main part. So there's been issues of, of bereavement, isolation, loneliness, uh, depression as well. And I know for particularly young children, it's been, it's been particularly challenging. It's mostly all they've seen uh, all, their, all their young lives is this pandemic. Um, so we've needed to identify vulnerable students. We've needed to check that staff are okay. And a number of schools have built uh, health and wellbeing portals full of useful information with things like emergency buttons for teachers and the ability for, for children to jump on and book a private meeting. River Tees Matt have also done one here, um, created an encyclopedic portal containing advice for staff. You will be hearing more from their CEO uh, later on today. And the counselling service at Gothworth Academy um, also created an area to, to support their children uh, as well. I think it was 1,200 times this site was, was visited. These things aren't a technical achievement for Frog or for the schools, but they, they have been really important um, throughout, throughout this last 12, 18 months. Uh, I guess it's good that people can throw these things together super quick. Right, so on to the, the more ambitious things. There's, there's three main patterns that we've, that we've seen over the last 12, 18 months. New teaching models, new assessment models, and much higher parent expectations as well. Um, and I'm just going to run through a few, few examples for you to show you what's going on. Uh, I have to say that quote there, for me, the pandemic was the best thing to happen to Frog in our school. That was in terms of usage that uh, Nikki didn't mean anything else by that. Okay, so the first, the first example, um, British School of Paris um, had set it up so that before the children even started into the school for the year, the learners and the parents had got access to all of the learning, again, be before they even got to school. Um, it went really well. The exam results were meaningfully better from having that resource available to them. Uh, the school did, did attribute much of the improvement in the exam results to, results to that. 
And a great anecdote from there is that one of one of the the children left the country to go to go somewhere else, uh, and after arriving at the other school, ended up jumping back on roll at British School of Paris as a remote learner because they they preferred the the provision of having everything available to them. Also, Oak House Barcelona um, put all of their lessons online, um, and they used a lot of videos of teachers, and we we know from from past research that children love having videos of teachers on there because they can pause, they can rewind, and with all of the learning materials on there as well, the, the children are going at their, their own pace. Sometimes they want a little bit more time than is available in a typical class, sometimes they need less. Uh, and generally speaking, we, we, we do hear a lot that children prefer having everything they need that they can, they can go through, like their YouTube videos, I suppose. Um, I am told now that now Oak House are back, that all of the teachers are still using these techniques because they've seen the benefits for themselves. And, and in all of these examples, as we've gone through uh, through the lockdowns, frogs typically been used by a few uh, enthusiastic schools in lots, of, sorry, a few enthusiastic teachers in schools that drive it. And obviously during this process, every teacher's got involved in these schools because they've they've had to do so. So it's been a bit of a crash course for them in, in these kind of technologies, where they have seen the benefit of, of using this kind of stuff. Winston Churchill School, um, before the lockdowns, um, John Parsons there had got a, a good bank of their learning materials onto Frog anyway. He's it, it, it a strong belief in that, and he'd got that ready to rock uh, beforehand. And because of that, their journey through this was was obviously maybe a little, little easier than many others. Um, during the, the lockdown, John's then made sure that every single thing that the teachers did, be it an assignment or some extra content that was built, everything was built for the long term, not just for the lockdown. So it was properly properly set up. It tagged it with various curriculum objectives so the kids could get to it uh, with a very long term view. And really, this is the most important bit to me, I think. We've, again, a quote last year we worked to get all the sites on Frog populated for every lesson, ready for the start of the week. It isn't easy to do. It is a lot of work. But now this year, we can simply tweak what's already there. And this is what it's all about, really. And I know it's not easy to do in the first instance, but once it's there, three big things happen. Number one is that the children and the parents have got genuine 24 seven access to everything they need. And as you'll see later on, when, when, we, when we can give them information on where their weak areas are through assessment, they've, 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 they've got all the tools they need really to take ownership of their own learning. We also see that um, teachers focus more on tweaking and improving a central bank of resources rather than maybe sourcing them. And, and the third area is the level of sharing between teachers goes up as well because all of the, the, the learning materials are available not just to the kids but to other teachers. So it, to be clear, it is work to set this thing up, but once it's up, the, the reduction in teacher workload can be, can be, can be significant. Um, and I think the important thing here is that most of you guys have had to do this in some form or other. You've, you've got it there, ready to go. Um, I think that's it for that bit. It, uh, the last thing really is that this, it's, think of this if you were using assignments in Frog, that's maybe transactional. But once all of the learning materials and everything are online and anybody can get to them whenever they need them, it becomes more transformational inside the school. And we have a lot of examples of, of that happening. OK, super quick on to new assessment models. It's um, undoubtedly been more challenging to check up on your kids when they're not in the same classroom and they're, they're sat at home. Um, Again, this is Winston Churchill as a great example. Uh, they've been using Frog Progress to make sure that kids aren't falling through the cracks. Um, they've, they've had ideas, you can see there. If it's purple, work on it. So for all of the things that the children need to look at, if it's marked as purple on there, um, the, the kids need to know, know to go get on with it. Um, and bear in mind, Winston Churchill have got all the learning content on there. They were given the the, the area they need to look at and the resources to be able to, to go do that. It's a really simple but, but powerful principle, really. Put your learning materials online and then, and then show the kids where they need to focus their attention. Greenshaw, uh, similar objective, but done in a, in a slightly different way. Again, these guys were doing this before the lockdowns. So Greenshaw School have been running every couple of weeks uh, low-state quizzing for the entire school. And what they do is they, 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 
they give the kids a load of, uh, I say, low state questions that cover everything they've done over the last few weeks for every single subject. And it gives a, like a diagnosis, if you like, of where, uh, where only children are struggling. It highlights common misconceptions. Children are given the results of those quizzes um, uh, the following day. And then any areas are picked up in, in, in class during the next two weeks to make sure everybody's rocking and rolling. Uh, and as you can imagine, that, that process became infinitely more powerful during, during lockdown. Last area we've got is, um, whether we like it or not, I guess, there are now higher expectations from, from parents. They've been able to see the work that the kids are getting, how they're getting it, uh, how the kids are coping with it. Uh, and they've been very much involved in their children's education career over, over the last period. Um, some have become key parts of that 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 process, um, but everyone's really had the chance to 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 observe it, uh, and it's brought a great opportunity for 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 those that want to grab it to bring some more enthusiasm and ambition to that. And I guess the key thing here is that we we know that that children who've got parents that care about their education do better than those that don't. So there is an opportunity here for us to to grab that. So Finton School did this by sharing the learning materials with mum and dad and then getting mum or dad to take a photo of the work that the kids have done using Frog Snap, which then goes onto the, um, onto the little timeline thing you've got there. And then the teachers will put comments and encouragement underneath that. And that, that went so well and parents got so involved that now the kids have gone back into the classroom. That's flipped over. And now the teachers are taking photographs of the kids' work and mum and dad are commenting on it. Um, and, and you guys will know if you've heard me speak before that, that this idea of an authentic audience is, is something that, that really resonates with me. That ability to, to, to give the children, you know, their mum and dad able to comment on it rather than it just be marked by the teacher. Uh, Canterbury School were using e-portfolios so their parents could actually see what was going on in the in the nursery part of, of the school, what little ones have been reading and photos of them playing and working. Uh, teachers, uh, sorry, parents like that so much that they then drove more and more stuff to go into this and, and now every aspect of their daily life exists in that, in that um, frog learning journal. Uh, it's helping with peace of mind of, for, for staff and for parents but as an independent school obviously this service has been a, a point of real conversation and differentiation. Similarly Arbor School, these guys are in a really competitive part of the world uh, and they've been constructing a pair of portal for the same reasons if these are all around classes so each individual class has got their own their own portal and the key to success of that really for them has been taking everything that was all over the place before manual processes other other computer systems and putting everything all into one place and as you can see it looks pretty good so that's what their parents log into and everything they need is is in that one place uh, Mandy the director of studies from there is talking later in in this panel discussion and last one, um, Oak House in Barcelona are sharing all their teaching and learning resources directly with their parents to the point it's now become uh, an expectation. Uh, they've embraced this, this school parent partnership completely. They're now setting things like uh, events and competitions for their parents as well to get more, more embedded. So really whether you're trying to inspire, inspire them to get more interest in what the children are doing or, or you're giving them what they're demanding really because many schools, uh, parents are demanding that. Um, strike while the iron's hot, I guess. We do, have, we do have more parents engaged with us than, than we have for some time from what I hear. So the last thing to say really, I guess, is that, is that a, lot, a lot of teachers have taken this in their stride. They're very used to this, but, but a lot of them this is fairly new to. Um, and, and it has been a challenge, uh, but I'm, I'm delighted to say the feedback we've got is that is that even for those teachers that maybe wouldn't have engaged with it too much previously, they, they've seen the benefits of it, uh, uh, and they're continuing to do it when they've when they've gone back. Uh, and I, I think this slide I showed you this one earlier, but I just think it it, it describes it so well. Um, they put the resources all online; it wasn't easy. But now everybody's just tweaking it. And I, I see this as a real opportunity today because most schools have, have built up this bank of resources and it isn't easy. And that, that just includes your assignments as well. Any assignments that you've sent out, they're still recyclable resources. And it feels like now as we go into the classroom, and I know most of you are doing this, 
to hold on to them, to tidy them up, to share them, to, to, to get into that habit of having that resource available. It, it genuinely can be transformative. Or, or we can let it slide away as we just head back to the classroom. And, and it would just seem a real shame to do that. So I think if any of you have got this together uh, and you're wondering how to keep hold of it and how to get more from it, you know, give us a shout. We, we have seen some fantastic benefits of this happening. Give us a shout, we'll help you through it. Um, Seems like too good an opportunity to miss. My 15 minutes are up. Thank you very much again for coming, everyone. Um, I hope the rest of the day is enjoyable for you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thanks so much, Gareth. Um, so thank you very much to Gareth for opening the conference. I think it was really key, and I know a lot of you out there will have, uh, from our global audience, have been banging the drum about putting technology at the forefront of your teaching learning strategy and it's very interesting to hear that the teaching methods that have been adopted and the hybrid learning approach addressing gaps in assessment are for those that have gone back into the classroom are continuing and everyone has seen the benefits but as such uh, 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 as such something that's actually happened is the elevated parental expectations we'll be addressing that later on so now what we'd like to do is give you a bit of a, a, a tour of some of the new things that are coming that are going to support that approach. So Graham's here, our solutions architect. For those of you that don't know Graham, I think most of you do. And I shall disappear and hand over now. Thanks, Graham. Hi, Lucy. Thank you very much, everyone. I think it's time to turn the lights down, grab the box of popcorn, the tub of popcorn. I've got 10 minutes to show some of the new features you're getting in the next couple of updates. So let me just get ready for that. Um, we've been doing a lot of work, obviously, as you know, over the last 12 months, making sure you're dealing with all the challenges of lockdown, of remote learning, of hybrid lessons. But we've also been working on the new features you've asked for. So I'm going to show you just a glimpse of these. Obviously, I'll be around in the comments if you've got any questions, and we can arrange further conversations if you want to find out more. So the first thing, Teams integration. This is a major feature you've been asked for, you've been asking us for. Uh, as most of you know, we can already integrate with Office 365, letting you use your online Office files inside Frog. And with Azure AD and ADFS, you can single sign on from Frog into OneDrive and Outlook and so on. But now we've added the ability to create Teams meetings directly from Frog assignments. We did this because lots of our schools asked us that they were demonstrating that they were using the assignment calendar to schedule people's days during lockdown. I'm not sure if in the UK we'll be back in a full lockdown, but plenty of you have told me that you've got students who are isolating at home and are having to teach both in the classroom and online. So I do see the power of being able to do this. Now, what we do is I'm going to demonstrate to you how this all works using a video because of the nature of the single sign-on. We use Frog in the office, so it gets all a bit messy with our testing environment. So I've had to make a video for you. So you'll just have to bear with me. I'll try to just let it play, but I might have to hit pause in a couple of places. So there's multiple areas of Teams integration. One, it's creating those Teams meetings directly from assignments, but also then using the assignment calendar as that live meeting. It also means that we've had to do SSO from Frog into the Teams meeting and a Teams meeting widget. And so if this is our, dash, our staff dashboard, here's my Teams meeting widget. So any meeting I create via Frog will appear in this list, making it really easy for me as a teacher to access any of the meetings I've got coming up. But the assignment bit, the, the big bit that's important, I go to create a new assignment, I start filling it out, you know, the, all the usual things that you would want to push in here, but then I've got this set up Teams meeting button and checking that on, that's all I need to do. That will create the Teams meeting for me and only and give it out to the students who are going to be attending, uh, who are in that class that I'm setting up. So I hit assign and that goes off, it creates the assignment in the usual way I can obviously see it in my upcoming Teams meetings. I can see it from the assignment calendar and I can see it in Markbook. So I'm just, yeah, so there it is. It just appears as a regular thing. So I can access it via here and then let's, hopefully the video will jump on. I click into the lesson and now I've got this great big button, open Microsoft Teams and clicking that takes me into Teams, sets everything up for me. 
Well, I'll do this. Now, I did this, uh, just to warn you, I did this while testing at home. So uh, you're about to see my testing face while I was making sure everything's ready. <laughs> Such a natural. <laughs> I had to pause it as well because I kept looking over to the other screen. From the student's point of view, though, when they log in, they can see all of their assignments in their assignment list just as usual. But when they also, they can go and access it both from there and in their assignment calendar click on the lesson I'd created uh, from before. And there we have at the bottom the button, open Microsoft Teams. They click that and they're into the meeting. So that's our Teams integration. Now, one thing I didn't mention is you're about to get, this is the first of two major updates you're getting. So you're gonna get this Teams integration first. Uh, you, Your admins do have to do some setup. We've done a whole write-up of instructions around how they do that, but yeah, you'll have these four elements all built in in that way. So that's Teams. But I've just mentioned that that's the first of two major updates. In the following update, you're going to get the ability to take the assignment calendar even further with a tool called Scheduled Lessons. And I'm going to show you this live instead of another video. So I'll just jump over to my Blue Peter. Here's one I've prepared earlier. In my assignment system, what we've done, we've still got all of the features that you've already you've always had in the assignment tool. But what we've done is we've taken them and we've put them in a box and we've pushed them over to here in this area. So if I want to set an assignment by default, I'll not have to change anything at all. I still have my visible from date, my issue date. I still have my due date. I still have my auto close. Everything is the same, but alongside it, I've now got the ability to schedule a lesson and that will create a separate tile in the assignment calendar for the time and date I specify. So to use it, I just turn it on. We'll set it for today. We'll set it for uh, quarter to 11 and that's it. So if I'm collecting in work from students, I'll want to have add to assignment list turned on and that will work in exactly the same way. If I'm wanting this just to be a live event and I'm not interested in going back to it, I can turn that off as well. We've tried to come up with all the different variations that you've described to us that you want. I fill all that out. I set my due date. What have I missed? Oh, let's go through. I've got an activity and we'll assign that out that way. So that will now fire off and that's gone over to uh, the students area. And if I come over and show you what that looks like from a student point of view, here's my assignment calendar. Now, one of the things that I liked about this as described to us by schools that they wanted was the ability that maybe on a Monday, you will have your lesson. You will have that tile available there, something like this maths lesson click open on it. I might not be using Teams, so I might well have a Google Meet in there, but I've also got a file drop because I'm going to use this to collect in work. So I have my lesson on the Monday, and then the students come back and hand that work in on the Thursday, and it's the same lesson. Now, a cute little thing I'll just show you is I am logged in as a student. If I go on to click on a lesson for tomorrow, I get a little message saying I'm too keen. It's for the day of the lesson and that it's open that way. So that is scheduled lessons. But what was then described to us, and I'll just skip on a couple of slides, is what happens if you've done that recording of you've you've had your live lesson on that Monday and you want to add the recording or you want to add some resources after the lesson for the students to do homework. Well, we're finally giving you the ability to edit assignment resources. You've always had the ability to alter instructions and groups and dates and, and um, the marking. But now when you go to edit that assignment from Markbook, you'll have the resources tab in there too. And you can drop in and you can swap out resources as you need to. So it's been a long time coming, but there we go. And I thought that deserved fireworks, if nothing else. Now, let me jump on to the next thing I want to talk about. Frog online training. As you know, for many years now, we've had on the community a whole set of video guides broken down into all the different categories of Frog. Well, Stefan's going to show you the platform in a few moments, but what I've done is I've taken all of our training materials and I've rewritten them into, not just me, but we've rewritten them 
into an entire online training platform. And here today, I'm making you an offer. If you want to have all of your staff have accounts on our online training platform, and you as the frog coordinator, you'll be able to oversee all of the modules, and how staff are progressing through them. You'll be able to ask for modules to be made mandatory for staff to do them. If you want that offer, drop me a line after this we'll talk we'll get all your staff accounts set up and it's a great way of ensuring that that knowledge is being passed on among your colleagues that's what we can do for all the staff in your school but what about you well in the summer we soft launched our advocate program and this is a, an opportunity for you to work through all of our training materials and demonstrate that you know everything at that point, you'll become a frog community specialist. Then we like we ask you to demonstrate just how much you're using that in that knowledge to share amongst your colleagues and help transform your school. And that makes you a frog community genius. And Adrian, Martin, Paul, Tizzy, and Richard, we are all our current geniuses. We soft launched this in the summer, and these guys just blasted through because they were already doing this. So this was a case of them assembling their evidence. You can apply at the web address on the, the screen there. Again, if you've got questions, ask me in the comments. But it's been a really nice and enjoyable uh, program to see in action. And uh, everyone seems to have uh, got a kick out of working through it. Now, the next one, this doesn't really fit here, but I'm going to give it a quick mention because it's already being used by schools in really creative ways. I'm not going to go into details here, except to say that using our form security, we can display personal data to the logged in user. And this can be anything from third party logins, and clubs and music lessons to socks timetables. And I've even helped one school share GCSE results on results day. So it's well worth checking out. But of course, I couldn't possibly do it now and next without talking about the Frog Academy and all of the different tools that we've got in here that's available. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with the Frog Academy, it's simple. Uh, there, are, there are ways of assembling frog sites in such ways just to create really quite complex solutions that solve problems for you in school. So we've got everything from the appraisal and lesson observation system to behavior to IT help desks to uh, money saving digital planners. And that offer is open to everybody. As part of your FrogLearn license, you can have any of these tools installed and I'll talk you through them. One thing I love about the Frog Academy though is how much it's inspired everybody. And we've got we've had situations where uh, schools have con contacted me to say, would you like our portal for GDPR? Would you like our HR portal? And so we've taken those, we've built them up, and we've now distributed them to dozens of other schools. So these are all available still. Uh, and if you have any questions about them, then it, as again, get in touch with me in the comments. But Lucy, that was me doing a whistle stop tour. I hope uh, that was clear for everyone. More than happy to discuss uh, in more detail. And I hope to speak to you soon. That's brilliant, Graham. Thank you. I think you've got a bit of a, a Google party wants to wants to communicate with you at some point as well. So we'll set that up. Right and up. just to reiterate what you were saying, for those schools that don't have Frog here, the, the, the Frog Academy, everything available in there is built from Frog, using Frog, without hitting our development team. And it's available for every Frog school for free. Yeah. Lovely. Right. Thank you so much, Graham. Thank you. All right, you're right. Thanks. Um, the the next section, I'm. Uh, you'll have seen Stefan on the chat as well, and uh, Stefan is going to join us to talk about Frog's professional development platform. Now, although we've already talked about all of the new and groovy things that are happening in Frog, this one deserves a dedicated slot. So, I'm going to pass over to you, Stefan. Thank you very much, Lucy. And um, <clears throat> I'm just reveling in here in the idea of this uh, bronze statue of Graham um, at, at Greenshaw. I think that'd be fantastic. And I'd certainly put money into that. Um, so get in touch with me, George. I love the idea. So um, hello, everybody. Um, lovely to, to have you all here. Um, <clears throat> this year, we launched um, our professional development platform uh, to schools and to multi-academy trusts. Um, and after um, my small slot, uh, Sarah Birch from the River Tees Multi Academy Trust will be, and she was promoted by Gareth to, to CEO. Um, and we'll we'll have a chuckle about that when she comes on. 
Um, but she uh, should be coming on to talk about what they're doing with the uh, professional development platform and how that's impacted on the culture of uh, the, the trust. Um, I wanted to take a few minutes first just to give a bit of context around this platform and to, to tell you all what it's what it's about um, and to show you um, what it looks like and, and how it sort of hangs together. Um, now, while we've only just started delivering this into schools and multi-academy trusts for staff training, actually we've been delivering it at scale to, uh, to some very high profile organisations over the past uh, couple of years. Um, organisations like Wessex Water, uh, which is a, a large utilities company down in the southwest, um, companies like uh, Civica, um, in both of these cases they've got a lot of staff, they are all working remotely, Civica's um, staff, there's four or five thousand of them are based um, all around the world in different offices, Wessex Water, they have lots and lots of engineers, again four thousand plus out on the road um, fixing pipes here, there and, and everywhere or whatever else uh, they, they need to do. Um, things like compliance is really important in these companies and they needed a platform to be able to deliver this at scale um, and with, um, uh, with economic advantages. Um, we also worked with, um, oh, and I should say as well, these companies, as well as doing compliance, they, they moved on to do things like staff inductions um, and general um, uh, CPD for their staff. We worked with prof um, organizations like Natsco. Natsco is the anti-terrorism um, agency affiliated to the UK government. They wanted to train all frontline workers in shopping centers, football stadiums, theaters, uh, that, that kind of thing. Um, to spot the signs of terrorism, thinking they should be the first line in, in the fight against terrorism. Um, we've had 650,000 plus people go through the training on that platform now. And then there's been um, a sort of premium um, brands like Princess Yachts who've used us firstly for their apprenticeship training, um, but then for things like, again, induction and CPD uh, across their organisation. Well, this year when we looped around and started talking to our core market, you guys, the, uh, the schools and the, uh, the school groups, the multi-academy trusts, we found that there were three uh, big strands um, to where this platform became useful. Um, the first was compliance um, and with multi-academy trusts particularly, um, this, the, the, the landscape around internal scrutiny and the legislation uh, that's come out around internal scrutiny makes this more significant than ever, uh, certainly over the last six months. So we've got compliance is, is one strand, um, induction is a, a second strand, making sure we're inducting people across a large organisation um, into the culture and the processes and procedures of the organisation. A multi-academy trust is a prism we'll look through, uh, look through today to look at that. Um, and then finally, CPD. And again, if we look at something like a multi-academy trust, there's pockets of expertise and good practice all across a multi-academy trust. And what this platform allows us to do is bring all of that into a central place so everybody can benefit from that expertise. So I'm just going to take a few moments um, before I bring Sarah on uh, from the River Tees Trust to, to give you a bit of a, a view of the platform. So I'll share my screen now. There we are. Um, okay, so uh, this is very straightforward, very simple to, to, to use. Um, everyone in, in this platform is a learner. Now I've logged in as a learner with some management responsibilities and some admin um, uh, uh, permissions as well, um, but everyone's a learner because of course, right through to the CEO of a company, we're going to need to do uh, certainly things like compliance, GDPR training, health and safety training, that uh, data protection training, that sort of thing. Um, now, when we log on to the platform, we've got a menu along the top, um, down the right hand side here, you'll see things like um, links and Twitter fees and videos. Any, this is a training portal, so anything you think is relevant to your organizational training will sit down the, the, the side there. But the important bit is, is this. These are all of the modules, all the courses um, that we'll, we'll need to do. And for a learner, this is split into to two lots. The first is mandatory um, training. So these are things you have to do, like compliance, like GDPR, like induction um, training that, that new starters would have to do. Um, but then there are what we call my choices. This is the training you elect to do. And we'll look at that in a second. Now with the, the stuff you have to do, the mandatory training, the compliance training, that can all be date stamped. Any of this can be date stamped. So you have to, for example, have done your GDPR training by the end of, of October. Um, and Frog manages the admin behind that, reminding people and sending out emails and so on and so forth. It's worth mentioning we use this internally at Frog um, and we've all just been doing our GDPR training as it happens um, over the last, last week or so. And everyone's now um, up to date with, with that. 
Um, we then have a catalog, and this is where you elect to do your training. This is a bank of training um, modules and courses that you'll build up over time that um, learners will be able to come in and choose from. Um, as you'll see here, what we've done is we split this into, this is a mat, we split this into classroom practice, um, data and privacy, health and safety, induction, personal health and well-being, and so on and so forth. You'll have full control over this and you'll develop these, these courses, although we are facilitating um, schools and multi cavity trust sharing uh, some of the modules that they, they create as well. Um, as soon as you elect to do a course, that then appears on your dashboard as one of my choices, um, and that can be reported on and we can see what everyone's doing across, across the trust. Multi-academy trusts in particular have said this is a really great way to get policies and be active in ensuring everybody's up to date with, with policies. Again, when it comes to things like internal scrutiny, this is really, really important. A policy can be, if I go into one of these, code of conduct, could be anything as simple as a PDF document. And the way this is reported on is as a learner, if I go into that PDF document, I open it, it may say, yep, they've, they've done it, they've read it. Or I may have to tick a box um, with a statement that I've read it and, and any you can word that statement in any way you like. If you want to be more active um, in the way people are engaging with uh, policies, you might want to put some multi-choice questions around this to ensure they, they've understood it um, and, and read it properly. And again, with internal scrutiny, this is, this is really important. As a learner, I'll see my awards. Um, these certificates, they're branded to your organisations. So they look great. And of course, they're, they're PDF and downloadable and you can do what you like with those. Um, but it's a, it's a great way to, to reward your learners automatically for the, the, the training and the learning they've been doing. We build social elements into this platform. Social elements work in two ways, really. Um, the first is, is this. We've got a general social area where we may have forums, we may have chat walls, um, we may want to, to share our materials and everybody can engage with each other. That's a sort of general training area. But when we build these courses, when we build these training courses, you can build elements of social learning into that too. So if I'm doing, um, I don't know, a, a course on um, managing boys' behaviour in the classroom, there may be an element of that training course where I have to go and um, add to the forum and actually engage in the conversation. Um, and there's lots of activities like that that, that bring this training, training alive. There's a training calendar. So across your organisation, if we imagine a multi-academy trust with lots of training going on, um, while this uh, this platform allows you to to feed out um, uh, uh, training uh, training courses, it's a blended platform. So it's also promoting the idea of face to face courses too, and helping you to to manage that. Um, that may be a Google Meet, a Teams Meet, it may be a, a training session going on in the main hall or a seminar room. But you'll be able to see all of the training um, courses available to you as a learner, and you'll be able to sign up to those um, from here. Um, and Frog manages the numbers and helps you to administrate this, this too. But it's a really lovely way to see all of the training available to you and allow you to, um, to jump onto that. As a manager, I can see things about my team. I can see the training they're doing, the training they want to do. Importantly, I can be involved in assessment too. Um, there's different ways to assess in Frog. Um, there are things, as I say, like opening up a document or clicking on a link and Frog says, yes, they've done that. We'll report on that. There's the self-assessment, a tick box. Um, there's multi, uh, what do you call it, self-marking quizzes, um, where Frog takes the load and assesses for you. But sometimes we will want to upload um, some evidence, a, a document, a photograph, a video, audio files, etc. Um, and that can be then assessed by a manager or by your learning, learning team, and that can be seen here. And then finally, we've got some beautiful reports. This is what it's all about, really, at the end of the day, is not just delivering the training, but seeing how the training is, is panning out across our organisation. Um, there's lots of reports you can get, but to give you a flavour, um, we can look at an individual module uh, or a course, in this case, health and safety in the workplace. We can look at a team, see how far through the course they are. Have they started? Um, have they not started? Have they completed? We've got all the information we need there. An individual, we can see the courses that individual has to do. The M means it's mandatory. So we can see these are probably compliance uh, or induction courses that he has to do. And we can see whether he started, if it needs in some interventional support, if he's completed or if he's in the middle of it. But crucially, we can also see the courses that he's elected to do, the non-mandatory ones. Um, and that helps us to see where that member of staff's interests lie and help support their career development. 
a manager can see their team and see how uh, instantly see the shape of training across the team. Again, mandatory courses, etc. What started, what hasn't started, uh, and the general health of, of where we are with things. I don't want to go into too much more detail. There's lots to show, as you you can imagine, but hopefully that gives you a bit of an image, a bit of a flavour um, of um, of what the uh, professional development platform looks like and some of the things you may want to do with it. But what I'm going to do now is ask uh, to bring Sarah uh, Birch from the uh, River Tees Multi Academy Trust onto the stage. Um, they've been working closely with us um, to uh, to roll this out, to roll the, the professional development platform out across their trust and beyond. So they've got a really interesting story to tell. Um, nice to see you, Sarah. Hello, nice to see you too. Our MD, Gareth um, Davis, promoted you to CEO this morning. How do you feel about that? Um, I feel fantastic. I'm not sure how fantastic Christina Jones, our actual <laughs> CEO, might feel. Um, but actually, yeah, I'm going to leave her with that workload. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. Well, I'd like to be the first to congratulate you on that. And I'll, I'll hand the floor over to, to you, Sarah. Lovely. Thank you. I'm just going to share my screen. So just give me a moment. And hopefully this all works for you. Um, so, uh, can everyone see my screen there? Because now I can't see anybody. We, we can so, see you. Uh, sorry, Sarah. We can see yeah, you. Yes, sorry. It's really confusing when you then can't see anyone at all. So, I do apologise. I can now not see people's faces and I can't see the chat so when I get towards the end I will stop and take any questions if they are and I'll have a look through that chat and I am on the next part with the conversation so as um, Stefan's been talking about we have partnered up with FOB we've been in partnership with them for a long time because they've been our VLE but we wanted to design a training platform that met the needs of our trust and um, so that was the reason that we chose to sign up with them. So a little bit about ourselves as a trust. So I work for River Tees Multi Academy Trust. Um, that's our strap line. We, we change lives. And I truly, truly believe that we do change the lives of our learners that we work with. Um, we are an alternative provision trust. So that means that many of our learners have either been excluded from school or are at risk of being excluded from school, or are in a home and hospital teaching provision. So the work that we do is very unique. It's almost a bit of a unique market. So we have a primary academy in Middlesbrough. We have a Middlesbrough academy in Middlesbrough. We have a high academy in Middlesbrough, and we have the home and hospital teaching in Middlesbrough. And um, that sounds wonderful. If you ever visit us, we are almost one site, um, but. Ofsted view was as three separate schools. So I won't refer to three Ofsteds in 14 working days as senior leadership. It was very intense, very tough, uh, tough but also a really rewarding experience. We also have an academy in Gateshead, our River Tyne Academy, and that's for key stage three and four. And we're really grateful to be opening a free school in Red Car and Cleveland next year. So again, that just gives a different a variety to the things that we do. So what we wanted to achieve, um, as I've just alluded to, because we are a multi-academy trust that is alternative provision, quite often a lot of the training packages are very mainstream. And whilst we have mainstream expectations and we really want our staff to strive for all of those, we also need some unique areas. For example, when you're doing the early career training framework, um, and you do the behaviour section for, a, for an NQT and an early career teacher, that's very much uh, low level, you know, getting the expectations right, getting the um, meetings right at the door. And those are all vital. And I'm not disrespecting them at all. But for a, a setting like ours, that has to be bread and butter practice. And actually, we might need something a little bit different for our ECTs when they're looking at behaviour. When we're planning for a group you, uh, in a mainstream setting, you're very much planning for 30 learners and moving things on the way that you need to. 
our learning is very much bespoke to individuals. How do we do that for each individual learner? There are 10 learners in a class, so we need a pedagogy that looks a little bit different. So it was really important that we could build a professional learning area for our staff that met the needs of our trust and our academies. We wanted also to empower staff in roles to create purposeful professional learning for their peers. So we have some real key players within our setting, you know, safeguarding being one of them, attendance, our PDLs, and we have roles such as a PDL, a personal development lead, that other schools don't utilise. So actually new staff coming into our school need to understand what that role is. If they've got um, aspirations to be in that role, they need to understand what training they uh, need to access and what that role would look like. So we wanted to empower the staff that we work with to say, do you know what? You can build a FOG course that explains your role or that we can tailor to your role so that those with those career aspirations are able to, to move in that direction. Um, and through that, we wanted to provide opportunities for staff to train for progressive other roles within the trust. So if, if you were a TA with an aspiration of being a PDL, actually, we could set that training up so that at a point of coming to an interview or applying for a role, you've got the ability to have said, well, actually, I've accessed some of the training for that role within the FOG courses, and this is my learning. Um, I think we can all say that we've been for interviews for positions that we've not yet been able to experience and it's really difficult to draw on the learning that you will do in that role when you haven't yet experienced it so what we hoped through for courses is we could build a platform where people could almost try before they buy get some learning in that area we also felt that we had a really strong induction program um, we, we went through all the different aspects. So, for example, my aspect was teaching and learning. You know, I would sit and spend time with them, showing them how to get on our pixel area. I would sit and spend time with them, showing them how to get onto our frog area and how to access that. When we took a, a step back and we looked at what frog courses could achieve for us, actually, a lot of that was administration. It was like how to's, this is where you access it. This is what you need to click on. And actually, if we built a course for that, then the induction time with the person who leads could become flipped of actually what we can do is support you in the aspects that you found difficult rather than teach you how to access those. So we felt that it would give a real key flavour to our induction where they can do the learning and then the time with the person who was inducting them in that area would become real quality time where they could come with key questions, key learning, and we could really unpick that and support them with it. And the other real big positive for us that I will go on to talk about in the um, conferency part was we now had a central area for our professional reflection and development model. So for everybody else, that's our appraisal system. We've taken time. We've really looked at how we wanted to develop that and how we wanted to change the model and we've worked with FROG that that is now built into FROG courses and it's a real positive area. So I'll touch on it with you today, but we'll also talk further about it later. So again, we approached FROG. It was a conversation with them. At that point, they were working with external companies, not educators. And we were like, do you know what? We really want to buy into this. This is something really positive for our staff and something that we can build that is bespoke to the learning that they need from us. So the benefit of working with FROG is anyone working in our industry knows that we have thousands and thousands of platforms, you know, exam bodies, um, management systems, all needing different usernames and different passwords. And actually, we had FROG already and FROG courses give us the ability to use the same username and password. So whilst that seems something really simple on the ground, it's really time effective. Also, our staff were already using the, the FROG VLE. So they were really familiar with the accessibility, which widgets they could use, how to do that. And because the course used the same structure as the VLE, 
They were already quite competent with the widgets, the page layouts, the features, which makes building a course really accessible for everyone. There's a few new tweaks to learn, but that takes about five minutes and then you are aware and you can build courses in whichever way, shape or form that you want. I heard Stefan touch on this earlier. We can add the policies to the course, which is a real positive feature and it identifies when they've been read. So such as the um, Keeping Children Safe in Education course, we can attach our school safeguarding policy to that training and ensure it's been read. We can also attach the, the KITSI document to that and ensure it's been read. So it gives us a real secure way of tracking that those policies have been read and understood. And it, it sounds really simple, but actually putting the policy onto FOG courses with an expectation it's read and the tick box to say that it's been done and building it as a course with a few key questions allows you to ensure it has been read and understood. And we found that you can put activities towards the end where staff can identify if they need further support or further training and it notifies key people. So it really becomes an area where you're assessing learning of policies and procedures within your school rather than just read the policy tick you've done it and um, the other positive is the course builders allow people to remember where they're up to and we all know what it's like you start a course with good intention you sit down you know you've got a clear hour in your diary you get part way through and distractions start to happen and you have to leave for whatever reason well, the four courses allows you to remember where you were up to. So you, when you go back to the course, you start from that remembered point. The courses can be set as mandatory. So I can say that this is an expectation that we expect our staff to complete this. Or, as Stefan said earlier, it can be just left so that they can optionally go into that. So they can have a browse through. Think, for those in education, I've got a spare half hour. We all know what that looks like. I'm going to access this course. The positive about the mandatory is it can be set with deadline dates and those reminders are sent out automatically. So I don't need to think as the lead, I must remember to send out a reminder email because everyone needs to do that training. And then the real positive is it feels corporate. We are a trust and we are a learning environment, but we can personalise all the content and all the graphics to our trust as you'll have seen from that front page there, that is River Tees branding. So the, the front page really looks and feels like our trust. So we achieved this by working with Frog. We've built in a catalogue, as you can see from that screen there. We have chosen the areas within our own catalogue. They're not set we have set those out so learn about our team at our governance area so that our our trustees and our governors can all access that area and look and do the training that we want specifically for our trust a leadership area so those wanting to enter leadership we all do the mpqs and they're great courses but actually we can build something that's quite bespoke in alternative provision it's quite unusual that there isn't all that national data for us to analyse and compare against. So what is it that we want our staff to learn and understand and set those benchmarks of measures for? And again, when you implement something new, you know, we do give those training sessions to staff, but we all know that people walk away and think, oh, can I just remember how to? What did that look like? And actually, we can build a course. We've built some courses on how to use for courses, ironically. But that allows staff in their own time to go, I'll just go back and review my learning. I'm not quite sure how to do X. I'll just go back and have a look instead of that continual stream of emails of, can you just show me again? Can I just have another five minutes? So it's really positive learning place that staff can refer back to whenever they need to. We also built in there a frequently asked questions area because we understand that people go on site and it doesn't always work the way they want it to. So we felt it really key that they could get help and support quickly by accessing that area. An email quickly gets sent to the relevant people and we can act on it. 
and deal with it and put it right quickly and effectively. There's no waiting for external agencies. The other part that we did, and I, I touched on it earlier, is built our appraisal area into there. So I bracketed appraisal, but actually we now call that our professional development and reflection area. And it's really, really key. So this is an area now within Frog Courses. We felt it was important to keep this area in Frog Courses because as we've alluded to in our title, it's about reflection and development. What are you going to do to broaden your horizons and to, to develop your knowledge base? So we felt it was really key that this was built into the courses area and that everything was together. So as we've said, we've built this in. So we've got appraisal guidance really quickly here. Teachers, TAs, <coughs> sorry, PDLs all have access to the, the learning needs that they have. We can put our policies in here. We've got government policies in there. It's a quick and easy way to access the documentation that they need. We have built in a, a resources area. So any CPD that we do deliver, any PowerPoints, any learning, any reading can quickly be dropped into an area that all staff can access really simply. Our entire lesson observation area is built into here. So what we will say is we have stepped away from lesson observations. So you'll see now it's very structured. Um, we do still see the value for ECT. So they still get those lesson observations. And that's why we built this into this area. So we built it so it's very structured. And when you access the documents, they're not only for the observee, but the observer, and they're both reflecting on their practices. And that comes through as a form, so we can really quickly look and get the information that we need from all of those aspects. We've also built in the CPD area. Um, so this is a, a site that's totally private to the individual and the user. But that CPD area can be accessed by any member of staff and it, it gives them a wealth of areas to record their CPD. So, for example, I've put some of them up here. They can evaluate any professional development that they've been on and put that form in. So we've got a continual monitoring and being able to look and see what the impact has. They've got an area to request professional development. And that is really effective because we've gone down all the lines. I've been quite ruthless in how rigorous that aspect is. But we've talked about who will need cover, how they transport there, what. So we can totally budget for that CPD. And then that request will go to their line manager initially and be signed off. And if the line manager is in agreement, they can attend that training. It then goes through to our business lead. But that is all set up as an automatic chain of emails. They can also see their requests that they've put in for their personal development. We felt it's really important as well that the staff are able to celebrate the CPD that they lead and that they disseminate. So that's built in because we all know what happens is you get to that appraisal at the, the October point and you're ruthlessly going through your diary going, what are all the things that I've done through the school year that I want to share? really key is we encourage our staff to do a lot of professional reading but again that gets lost in the system so we wanted somewhere where we could capture that um the cpd attended and we've moved very much to a coaching model and i don't want to monitor staff on that i don't want to know the ins and outs but what i do want to know is that they're attending those coaching sessions so we've been able to build in an area that is just a quick log that says the date whether they accessed a coaching session and what the impact was. I don't need the details. I don't want to monitor the staff. And then finally, that you know, we do go on courses that are external and they do give certificates, but we wanted somewhere where that can all be held central so they can upload those to the external certificates. And we've got a real central area of where everything is and what that looks like. The other key part of our professional development area is that we're not monitoring learning, we're not doing lesson observations, but we want staff to become really reflective in their practice. So we've built an area where they can upload 
their own recordings of lesson observations, as in their lesson, so that they can work with their coach, they can work with mentors if they're um, early career teachers, and they can unpick that learning, or ultimately, if they're teachers well in their career, and they just want to take a step back, because we find that when you're in the moment teaching, you see all the things that are happening, you react to the lesson, you don't almost unpick, because you haven't got that ability and that time space to do. So we felt it was really important that teachers could take ownership, record their lessons where they wanted to, and upload these into the appraisal area. So there's a central area that's captured, and this is private to that individual. You know, SLT aren't going in and monitoring this. This is about their learning, their capturing of their progress and their development and where they want that to go. And then we built our appraisal area. So as I said, it's slowly feeding through here. We completely changed that. So our appraisal now is based on two key aspects. It's based on some self-reflection of where they want to be, and that's going to be their coaching session and uh, an inquiry question, which is, is using their knowledge of our children and their data and a question that they think will impact on um, outcomes and they analyse that and they look at that. And actually what we've been able to build here is real purposeful forms that are bespoke to the needs of our staff and our school. And that has been a real honour of working with FROG, that they have built what we need as we need it. It hasn't been an external company that's gone, these are our frameworks and you almost do that real fit to your framework. Actually, Frog have been really supportive in developing things where they fit to our framework. And I will be honest, there's still areas that we want to develop and there's still things that you learn about as you're going through the, the, um, the process. But what I will say about Frog is they've been so supportive in when we found a barrier, we work together and we overcome that and we, we work with each other and we've built something that is very bespoke and very real to our school. So did we achieve what we wanted? Absolutely. We now have a great professional learning for our, our trust. Our staff in every role can build that learning for their peers. We've got those opportunities for staff to train for progressive roles. We've got now the ability to deliver the flipped learning induction programme to make it really bespoke to that new member of staff. And we have a brilliant area for our professional reflection and development model with everything in one place. Staff have one login that is about them. And it was really key that when we shared this, a member of our teaching staff at River Tyne actually came to see me and said, do you know what, I'm really, I'm, I, I want to write down what I feel about this because I feel that the Frog courses is exciting and empowering. I've been given some autonomy over my professional development. All too often, whole school CPD is uninspiring, repetitive and has no impact on actual development. But this member of staff, felt fortunate to work for such a progressive organisation and can't wait to get started with FROG courses because what they're seeing is I can go and choose what learning I want to develop my practice and where I've got learning, I can share that with others and help develop their practice. So a big thank you from me for listening. Um, like we said, working for River Tees Multi Academy Trust and I'm hoping now I can get everybody's faces back. Um, thank you. It's so strange when you can't see people. So I do apologise, but it has been really positive. So is there anything key that you would like me to pick up or you're happy to move on to the next section? Um, I think we've got a couple of uh, questions which Stefan's going to answer in the in the question section. Um, we've had lots of thumbs up during the chat and really positive feedback, Sarah. So I think it's absolutely fantastic. I'll give you a couple of seconds to jump off and get ready for the panel discussion. Lovely. Um, thank you. Thank you. See you in just a second. But for anybody, um, anybody else, you'll have just seen a message pop up in your screen. If you want to find out anything more rather than us, um, uh, we will take that away. And if you want to find out more, if you just click on the learn more um, action cog, we'll, 
will get in touch with you or point you in the right direction there. But um, now it is bang on time for Mark Anderson to join us and host the panel discussion. Uh, Mark has got five guests hanging in the wings. So we've got Elizabeth Sylvester from Frederick Goff School. We've got George Bly from Greenshaw High School. We've got uh, Phil Spores from Framlington Learning Village, Mandy Kirby joining us from uh, over in Dubai at the Arbor School and Sarah Birch back again in just a couple of seconds. Good morning, Mark. Lovely to see you. Yeah, you too, Lucy. Thank you. Um, really excited to chat to George, Phil, Tizzy, Mandy and Sarah as well. We're getting our money's worth out of Sarah today. Hopefully, Sarah, you can grab a, a, another glass of water from your last session through to this one. I'm really excited to unpick some of the sort of reasons behind choices of using um, Frog alongside uh, existing tools. The, the overriding question on the panel is going to be, you know, why you're using Frog? Why do you need Frog uh, when you've got access to things like Teams and Google Meet and uh, and all of these things? So I'm really excited to unpick that because it's a big question, you know. Um, if you have got these platforms, why do you actually need uh, these other things to sort of work with you and support you and, and all that? And I'm really hopeful that um, uh, we can hear uh, and get responses from Tizzy and George and, and uh, Phil and Mandy and, and Sarah uh, around all these things. What's, what's fantastic as well with the panel is that it's really diverse in terms of types of children and schools and settings uh, in, in which uh, these, these various uh, colleagues come from. Uh, so George, um, Digital Platforms Coordinator at Greenshaw, Matt, lots of schools in Sutton, uh, thinking about his sort of catchment. Then we've got Phil at um, Crumpton Learning Village uh, up, in, up in Yorkshire. I say up because I'm down in Somerset, as you probably tell from my accent, and down this neck of the woods, all right. And, uh, and then we've also got with well, us Tizzy Sylvester, uh, Assistant Principal at Frederick Goff School, Mandy Kirby, uh, joining us from the Arbor School in Dubai, where she's the head of middle school. And then uh, Sarah joining us again. I hope you did manage to get that glass of water, Sarah. Um, joining us uh, from the River Tees, Matt, and um, not CEO, but you're the standards lead uh, across the trust. Uh, as I believe your title to be. So thank you very much for all of you for joining us. Um, let's jump straight into that big question. And I, I, I'll ask it first of all to George and Tizzy. Uh, Tizzy, if you could, if you could um, uh, answer the question first and I'll jump to you afterwards, George, if that's okay with you. Um, why have you got Frog when you've got access to things like Microsoft and Google in your schools? Well, actually during lockdown, we were asked the same question by lots of people. And, and our answer really is that it's, it is bespoke. It's what we, it does whatever we want it to do. So we're able to amend it. We're able to um, change it, personalize it. And I actually find sometimes with Google and Teams, it seems quite clinical. Whereas actually for Frog, it feels quite comfortable and, and homely. And for the child engaging with that, they seem to find it easier to navigate therefore their way around because it's all well, the colors are engaging as well. What we do with it is up to us as a school um, and therefore we make it really what's going to work for our children in our setting and I think that's really key. Uh, it's been brilliant in terms of an engagement with those students, they've really bought into it and the more adaptions we make to Frog, the more they engage with it as well. So that personal approach I think is fab. That's really interesting. So I'm guessing and the fact that it's already quite malleable, uh, yeah. whereas the other offers aren't, it enables you to sort of tailor it to how you want within your school for your context, your setting, so forth and so on. Absolutely. And so then when we were at the last Frog conference and I heard George speak, suddenly when he was doing these amazing things at his school, we could take it back. And then I spent the last few months sort of stealing his idea and making it really relevant for our school. So actually, it's been really good that you can see what would work somewhere else and how you would use that in your setting to make it work for your children. So, yeah, exactly what you just said. Brilliant. And I guess that's part of the beauty of the Frog Academy as well, the fact that schools can work with Frog to develop yeah. bespoke things, but then can be sort of lifted and just used elsewhere in other schools. Brilliant. Thank you, Tizzy. Uh, George, same question to you then. Why, why do you find that you, you know, why are you using Frog when you've got access to th these other tools as well? I think um, I'd echo everything that was just said and I think the, the benefit for us, we were quite lucky that we had it well embedded anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so we would have been absolutely mental to go, actually, we're not going to use that, we're going to use Google Classroom, for example, um, in a massive lockdown. I think the main word that comes from our leadership team and from us here is the word context. I've seen other places use things like Google Classroom and Google Drive really well, but there's no context around it. 
it's a couple of documents on a page. There's no kind of, this is how we want you to work. We can't structure things the way we would do a normal lesson. So our lessons are quite structured. We can mirror that structure on a frog page really, really easily. Um, and other platforms, we just can't bend and shape to how we want them to be. Um, so for us, it's, a, it's actually what Graham mentioned this morning, actually, about being really customizable, uh, being able to display some data about a student right to their face, for example. We just can't do that in these bigger, these bigger company platforms. Mm. Um, and it's quite nice that Frog is quite homegrown. Um, and we can go to them. We can go to Lucy and Graham and say, can we do this? Yeah, we can do that. Fine. Let's, let's, let's build it together and give it to everyone else. Um, so for us, it's context, personalization, and just more friendly for the kids, really. That's really interesting, George. Thank you. And I guess that's also, I mean, you, you're mirroring, like you said, uh, similar comments and Tizzy there with, with the, the, sort of the, the, the way in which you can sort of, sort of mould and shape um, um, the, the, the platform to, to your particular context. And context is so, so important, isn't it? But the thing I want to sort of follow up with you, George, is um, have you got any other sort of use cases along uh, of how things are sort of, sort of tailored for your particular setting with, with across? Because you've got to so say it's not just the one school in your, your trust, is it? Have you got any other examples? there at all yeah so we've got um we're actually at the moment doing quite a lot of stuff that's not actually teaching a learning base and not actually classroom focused at all um so we're looking at the moment a lot of our systems we have inside the building and we're moving all of those onto frog so a perfect example is um the appraisal one is quite big but obviously that's been mentioned already so i won't talk about appraisals um but with even small things like we have rather than observations we have lesson visits and they're more informal so his department might do five lesson visits in a week, for example. Beforehand, you know, she would have gone to the room, written down what she saw in the lesson, go back to her desk, type it into an Excel spreadsheet. No one ever looks at it. We're moving that onto a, a, a frog-based system, which means mm. she's now got an iPad. We're quite lucky because we give all of our staff iPads when they start. Open up the frog app, types it in, save, she's done. So that's one example of not teaching and learning, but it's a school system that we have moved from traditional Excel based filling out a spreadsheet into a more dynamic based system. Um, and I think you'll see that across across our trust, to be honest, a lot of schools are now going, actually, well, why are we doing it like that? We've done it like that for five years. Let's change it. Um, so we're really looking at more at the moment, more like school systems rather than teaching and learning homework. I think we got that a bit nailed. It's more the other side of the more admin based stuff now that we're trying to focus on. Thank you, George. And, and that's really lovely to hear as well. That, and that goes back to the original sort of comment from, from you both about how flexible Frog is to complement lots of activities, not just to do with the teaching and learning or setting of assignments or uh, marking of, of tests and all those sort of things as well. That's really useful. Thank you, George. Uh, I wanted to jump back to, over to you for a second, Sarah. Um, you, I, I, I was really privileged to get a chance to meet you and other colleagues, uh, including the CEO <laughs> at the Trust uh, a, a little while ago. It's a really interesting setting, um, but um, can you share about um, ways in which you're using Frog beyond? Because okay, your setting is so interesting and and um, uh, and different to you know, a lot of uh, sort of standard school setups. How are you? Apart from the things you've shared already, which is the sort of CPD appraisal, onboarding, induction, all these different things. How are you using Frog with your learners as a platform to sit alongside everything else that you do? So we have used FROG through lockdown to support our learners and it was really useful that teachers could then set assignments through FROG, they could get the feedback through. Um, we've been really conscious as a school to, to, to think about streamlining systems. So I'm in complete agreement with George, you know, FROG can do pretty much anything you want it to do for your school system. We've mm -hmm. looked at it capturing all our behaviour for us and it can do those things. So what we've had to be really mindful of is setting a structure. So we have our MIS system, but explaining to school what that MIS system does for us. We have a data dashboard and we know what that does for us. And we've used Frog very much as the learner platform and the staff platform. So whilst we know it can go out and we can do an awful lot more than it can, that we're using it for, mm. we've been really mindful to keep structured areas so that staff almost know when I'm dealing HR, I go here. When I'm doing this, I go here. Um, and it has been really key, like we say, of just building that area that is about the teachers. You know, we, I, I will be honest, we bought into other systems prior to this for 
lesson visits, all of those things. And like it's already been alluded to already, we were forcing ourselves to fit their structure. Mm. And the things that I would say about Fog are coming through strong already through the people that have spoke. It is bespoke to what we need. We build what, we, we come up with the ideas, we talk with Fog, we find a way to do it. And that works for our setting. It's about our contact context. As you said, we're very unique. We look very, very different. But mm. actually, we can have what we need for our context. And we find real difficulty when we go out to somewhere and go, actually, we're four really small schools. But we're not even the size of a mainstream secondary when you add us all together. And actually settings are very much like oh but we charge with four schools we work as four schools you'll have four separate platforms but when I've got staff that work on all four sites that becomes really really tricky frog allows us one username one password one platform and it meets the needs of our context and we can absolutely personalize it everything that we want is personalized to our school needs mm. and the other thing that I think has come through from the other speakers as well that we would agree with it's user friendly. You know, you quite often see all of these packages and think, how do the learners access it? How do the staff access it? I'm going to need a four day training session just to show them which buttons to click. It, it's got that interface that is really quite user friendly and they can build anything into that. The widgets are really open in downloading YouTube into what you're doing, mm. adding media links, adding pictures, adding PDFs building walls for them to feed back immediately. There's so many opportunities with it. And I think as well, it's the support you get from Frog. For, for us, the end of a phone call all of the time, that, you know, nothing is too big. We find a way. And when you work with other companies, it's like, oh, well, that's all it, that's all it does. And that's how we use it. So I mm -hmm. found it really useful in the fact that we have very much gone now from our learners where we had a great VLE it shows our planning templates it shows what the learners are, are accessing it gives them opportunities to access different resources to now a real user-friendly staff area where they can capture their learning too and we can really celebrate reflection and development Brilliant. Thank you very much, Sarah. There's so much there. There's some really sort of consistent themes coming through about sort of flexibility, uh, how it's bespoke to you, the the uh, ability to sort of have access to the team and, and they'll work with you, making it sort of shape and, and fit to your particular context. I like the comment there as well, Sarah, about structure. Structure is so important for many of the learners that you have within your organisation, but actually structure is good for all of us. Uh, and uh, certainly when it comes to adoption from your colleagues across the trust as well, having that sort of consistent structure will be really helpful too i would assume so really lovely comments thank you very much uh, sarah jumping over to you phil now uh, i understand personalized learning is really important to you inside your curriculum um obviously we've heard some of the things we've mentioned before about consistency flexibility and, and so forth and so on um but um how are you using frog at uh, cramlington uh, to, to help um complement what you're doing with learners in the school around this idea of personalized learning yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll start by sort of echoing um, some of the things we've said about it being bespoke and customizable. And, you know, we're definitely tinkerers at our place. We um, we like to customize things. We like to build our own stuff. And Frog definitely allows us to do that. And that's one of the reasons it is so good for personalizing learning. And, um, you know, we've had Frog alongside Google for a number of years, sort of well over a decade. We use the two together and we quite regularly review things and look and say, you know, do we need everything that we've got? And every time we have that conversation, we sort of say, you know, we can't get rid of Frog because it's so central to what we do. And that's why it personalizes things for me. We've got um, tools that allow us to sort of deliver content to students and to let students engage like your Googles, like your Nearpods, like your um, Edpuzzles for video. But what they don't do is really let you understand your students and, mm -hmm. you know, the context of those students. And because Frog links with everything, it links with all of those tools and it links with our MIS. We can pull data through, we can put our own data in. We're able to pull everything into one central place so that we have access to that information about our students. So we have something, um, Graham Quince actually built this for us before he left for Frog. Um, we have something called My Classes, which pulls everything together. So on one page, you can see for every class in the school, you look at your class, 
you can see their reading ages, you can see their um, personal needs, you can see how many rewards they've got, you can see their career aspirations, their hopes, their dreams. Anything, any data that we have anywhere that used to be in disparate places is now just brought together assessment data into that one place. So we can see um, everything about students and that lets us target them for what they need um, and direct them to the right tools, which isn't always in Frog. Sometimes it's other tools in Google, but Frog is the kind of way that we get to those tools. And I think George mentioned this idea of it's very difficult to structure some of these other platforms like Google Classroom. And we do use Google Classroom to deliver our lessons, but what we do is we've got a little timetable widget in Frog that students see as soon as they log in. And from that timetable widget, teachers type in the, um, the classroom of their Google Classroom so that it's always there for students. So all students do at the start of the day, they log in, they see the timetable, they click on that little link, takes them directly to the work, and then they've got all of the resources that are personal to them. And it's good to see that Frog are, um, are personalizing stuff for staff now as well with the, um, the staff development platform, which I guess is the next step, giving staff that personal professional development that they need as well. Uh, thank you, Flash. Really interesting. I, I, I'm from your conversation. I'm minded, minded to a conversation I saw on Twitter just last week, and a, a teacher was saying it's all very well and good children having um, different needs and different levels of support and whatever. But I'm a secondary school teacher. I've got I teach four hundred, you know, four hundred different students a week. You know, everything's hidden away in a folder somewhere. I, I, I haven't got time to read or know what all the varying needs, aspirations, etc., 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 are for my learners. So it's fantastic to see how you're using Frog in that way to make it so accessible and easy, so teachers can deliver that sort of personalised approach to each. I really love that response. Thank you so much indeed, Phil. Uh, Mandy, I'm to turn to over to you now, if that's okay. And uh, um, uh, salam alaikum as, as you're over in, in, in Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, at, at the school there, how, how have you been using Frog around parental engagement um, and, and uh, sort of sh sharing people's work and the personalization and, and perhaps if you could share some of the impacts that you've been noticing? Yeah, um, we're new to Frog and we're also a new school. We're only in our start of our fourth year. Um, our lockdown was pretty short. So by the time we got Frog in, we were back in school. We've back, been back in for four terms. So we haven't actually accessed the VLE part of Frog at all. Our two key priorities were the assessment and the parental engagement. Um, we have assessment in three different places. Nothing spoke to each other. I found Frog and saw the assessment and went, brilliant, we can go from FS to um, Key Stage 4 and 5. So we've got that embedded now as we grow up into secondary. But one of the key things for us were we were back in school and the children were back in school, but the parents had no access to anything. They couldn't see what was going on. They didn't know what was going on. We had a new MIS and like, because it was also new and it didn't have any parent portal. Um, so all we had with parents was emails. So what we did was, I think we um, drove Claire and Graham nuts because all the things that we wanted were things that it's like, well, we don't really do that, but we can do it. So for example, we set up for parent notice boards. There's a general notice board that goes for all parents. We have year group notice boards where heads of year post. Um, our primary classes have a class website um, and that's where they share work on the inquiry project that's going on. So all the information's on there. That's where we post pictures of children working and their work. Uh, we set up the learning journals for FS. That was one of the first things we did. Um, we replaced um, tapestry that we had. So they were sharing um, the learning journey there. Um, we then set up the eat portfolios for all the other children. So they all children regularly post one or two pieces of work they're doing during the week that goes up there. Teachers post group pictures um, and things like that. Uh, we quite lucky because we've got lots of um, very exciting bespoke um, resources. We have biodomes on the school. We have um, an organic farm, we have a reflection garden. So it allows the parents to see inside and see where their children are, what they're doing. We still have restrictions and masks and things and distancing, but it, it shows them that the children are actually having um, a real life. We've built in um, with the e-portfolios, the parents can access all their students' academic reports, 
all the GL assessment parent reports we've stored up there so they can access them as well. Um, we've added house points on there so they can see individual house points, they can see um, the team's house points. We've now started booking um, our ECA program on there. So they basically we're trying to get the staff and the parents using this as a communication tool and mm. we stop sending out emails altogether. Staff notices, cover, homework for students posted there. But we're still using Teams um, in the classroom because we can't collect books in and mark them and things. So we're still using that alongside yeah. Frog. But all the information and the sharing of information is done in Frog. Thank you, Mandy. That's really interesting. And sort of given your setting, the rules from the KHDA, I mean, the UAE as well as a highly competitive market for schools such as yours. Uh, well, what sort of feedback? I mean, we, we also know the, the, the importance of that triangulation between sort of school, child and home as well. Having that sort of clear communication obviously raises uh, aspirations, but also supports the learners uh, so that they can achieve their best as well. So I mean, what has the feedback been from parents who've been uh, able to access all this amazing information about their child's sort of learning in school? What's, what's the feedback? been like um we're still in the early stages um we have some reluctant parents that still want individual feedback but um with the parents that are accessing it uh, are quite excited because prior to having frog the only information they got was at parents evenings or if they came in for an open day or um yeah if we sent work home through tapestry we still get parents going, oh, why don't you use something like Cast Class Dojo? It looks better and it's easier to use. But it's it's educating them that there is more than just the bit that they see. And for teachers, the most important bit is actually the assessment that's going on in the background that we don't share with students and parents yet, but hopefully somewhere down the line, they'll have access to that as well. But those that are accessing it are loving the fact that they they can see it all in one place. The messages are all in one place. The information on their child is there. Um, yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very much for that, Mandy. And, and as a parent who had a year five child using Class Dojo <laughs> during the various lockdowns, I, I, I would much have preferred personally for them to have not been using that. I won't dig into that right now. That's a whole can of worms open if I start getting to that conversation. Look, I'm mindful that we're all, almost out of time uh, on this uh, panel, but I wanted to sort of wrap things up at the end uh, of this conversation, uh, asking you uh, if you could all um, to sort of share, because one of the things I love about Frog is that the idea of the frog academy where you come up with ideas and you share things and then everyone can benefit from that development so uh in in uh, 60 seconds uh that's sure enough time for the last five minutes and i work uh, from tizzy to george to phil to sarah to mandy um although i feel bad actually mandy being a relatively new user so i'll start with you then go to tizzy george phil and sarah actually to give you first dibs um what's your favorite use of frog alongside what you do with other ed tech in the school mandy um, for me, it's the e-portfolios. I mean, it's really powerful because um, our children have Teams access, but our parents don't have Teams access. And having to communicate to parents to say, your child's done loads of amazing work. You need to go into their Teams account. You need to look at the chat notices or the assignments to see the work. It's really, really time consuming and I find it really stressful. So just being able to regularly share work and having the students do that um, is very powerful because what they choose as their best work to share each week is not necessarily what teachers would do so actually being able to show parents things that they wouldn't be able to see is is probably the most powerful thing i think we're using at the moment awesome thank you for your, your sharing your perspective there mandy thank you very thank much you. Tiz, tizzy over to you so this year or last summer we spent a lot of time creating a revision platform for our year 11 students and year 10s as well so now we've moved everything to one area so for every single subject there are videos there's powerpoints or word documents or the knowledge that the students need and then there's a quiz or an assessment which we saw from george last time so we then um, have now created this revision platform for everything that they could need almost to say don't go anywhere else go on to frog and everything you will need for your revision is in there. And all of our videos that our staff have created themselves, they all feature now. So anything that's gonna help you to succeed in your subject areas is all in one area. We, I can't give any feedback as to how it's going yet because we've only just launched it, but the feedback we've had when we've launched it's been incredibly positive. So now we just need the buy-in from students that 
they'll log in, they'll access, they'll use, and we'll hopefully see the end results in terms of the you know in the summer when they start taking their GCSEs. Hopefully, we'll see that impact then. So, yeah, hopefully, all that work we've put in and all the amazing work that Graham has done as well, and um, will showcase when the students start really using this for those exams. Thank you, Tizzy. And I'm guessing, I mean, that, I mean, like I say, you're still waiting to sort of hear the impact, but knowledge organisers are so useful and helpful in education. But how lovely to have a sort of a virtual knowledge organiser uh, where students can actually go in and, and everything they need for all their topics for everything is, is always there for them to refer back to. So, uh, and again, accessible on like any of their devices they've got at home or in school and all the rest of it as well. That's brilliant, Tizzy. Thank that, you. That's been a real key issue. So we're going back to the initial question. So if a child was on a Chromebook and couldn't access something, for example, We've made everything now PDF, so there's always accessibility. They can always get the documents they need. Anything that they need to have for revision, so we can't, we don't have that question of, I don't know how to revise, is now all on FOG, so they can access everything. So, yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, George, you always inspire me with your use at Greenshaw. What, what have you got to share? So I'm, I'm going to say two, though, don't hate me. Uh, Mark Books was, has been amazing this year. So from September, we said... If you want to track homework in your department, it has to be on a mark book, on a, a, a frog mark book, that is. If you want to track it somewhere else as well, that's your problem. But don't moan, you've got to track it twice because we told you to do it on the frog mark book. Um, some departments haven't quite got their head around only using one system yet, which is a bit odd to me. Um, so we now set all the homework through frog readers anyway, but now the central place to actually track that is through a frog mark book. So at any time, the leadership team can jump in and have a look at it. That's been really good. Second one is um, sixth form. So we've set up a personal statements um, system inside frog. So the kids have to write their personal statements before they put it onto UCAS for year 13. Um, and they used to use Microsoft Word or whatever to type those up in. And their tutor could never see it and help them with it. Um, and you get about 30 emails going between them trying to trying to make it better. So we set up a personal statements um, system inside Frog where they can both see it at the same time and annotate it together as well. Um, I think that might come out at some point as part of the Academy products. Um, I spoke to Lucy and Graham about it before, so we're happy to share that. Um, but it's really powerful for A-level tutors to be able to see the personal statements the kids have written as they're doing them. Um, so that's two from me, really. Oh, brilliant. Thank you, George. Uh, always good value for money. Uh, and that um, uh, UCAS application process is so difficult. I haven't been a sixth form tutor myself before. It, it can be so time consuming. It's, it's almost similar to what you have when you're in year nine, uh, not as a student, as a teacher, when you've got a year nine tutor group. The amount of time you spend sort of working with those children around their options processes and all that as well. So that sounds really, really useful and beneficial. Thanks for sharing those two, George. Thank you. Um, Phil, over to you. Uh, your uh, sort of favourite use of Frog alongside what you you use uh, else in the school okay so hard question putting us on the spot trying to think of one but um i'll do my best so i think you know impactful wise you know if i'm thinking about what's made an impact it would be the my classes that i've already described and um, there are two others that i really like at the moment one is our um cbd hub which we've developed but it's very similar to what sarah's already talked about so i'll skip that one as well um and the one i'll focus on is our learning walls so we're a one-to-one -one school and um because of that, we obviously have students, we want them to use devices across all different subjects. What we don't want to happen is for students to start just doing electronic work and tightening up everything rather than working on paper, like they'll have to do in exams and you're going to do in mm -hmm. life and everything like that. So um, what we developed was what we call our learning wall, which um, basically has a lot built into it, things like a literacy toolkit, so it will give them help with sentence starters. Um, help with coming up with different ways of writing things. Um, we've got things in there like how to work as part of a team, um, you know, the De Bonus, um thinking hats and how to use those. So all of these little tools that students can use, numeracy toolkit, that they can use to supplement other work that they're doing. So while the student's working on a piece of work in English, for example, they can have this learning toolkit open alongside them and they can be referring to that, getting ideas, seeing how to learn, seeing how to improve their learning, being a little bit more metacognitive, and so on. So that's my pick. Brilliant. I and mean, I really like that as well. So because having that sort of a virtual reckoner, I guess, would be how I would describe it, uh, where they can quickly refer back to things to get those sentence starters or <clears throat> the, 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 the pi r squared, whatever rules they need to remember for math or whatever it is, having all that in one place and space is so helpful to have that as a reckoner. And I guess that's kind of similar to um, uh, Tizzy's sharing around the, 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 the revision platform. Uh, in, in, it's, it's a source where children can go to it, be independent, uh, um, sort of save teacher time. They, they 
they can take control of their own learning as well. Uh, brilliant share there, Phil. Thank you very much for sharing that. Um, and then finally, then Sarah, over to you. Uh, your favourite. I mean, you've shared so many things. I feel quite bad now. I've put, put you last on the list. Your microphone's off as well. Sorry, Sarah. I don't know if you heard me there, Sarah. Your microphone's off. Sorry. Um, since since all my time and energy has gone into frog courses for the last year, I have to say it's frog courses. But again, it's that versatility. It's about building that bespoke development for our staff and then we've also started to look at how we can then use that platform for outreach work so a lot of schools do come to us for support with behavior with mental health with SEND because of the type of school we are well actually what we've learned through lockdown is a lot of that can be done remotely some of it we do need to do face to face so actually let's use frog courses to start building that aspect that's, that other schools can tap into remotely. Or like we say, if we're building a safeguard course, well, every school needs a safeguarding course. So why do we all need to do that? Let's let's share the resources and build a platform that works for outreach. Awesome. Listen, thank you very much for that, Sarah. And um, obviously, like, like you shared there, and lots of the things that have been created through the innovations in schools like Greenshore and so forth and so on are all available through the Frog Academy. There's been some really sort of clear themes from the conversations today. Um, it's been interesting as well that whilst you've got sort of Google and, and, and Microsoft running alongside what you're doing and you are using it, the majority of the things you've been talking about have been the ways and the power in which having Frog alongside that can really help drive things forward for you in your schools that thing around structure from sarah the thing about sort of the malleability the the flexibility that um tizzy and george have shared about the uh, ability to use it for parental engagement in the ways that mandy was sharing and, and, the, and the student portfolios there's so so much there it's clear to me if, if i was coming to, you know with a question uh, so why would i need frog if i've got teams or, or uh, microsoft 365 or, or google workspace we, we, we've clearly uh, sort of answered that question really really well uh, from the conversation on the panel today that just leads me to say uh, just to wrap up uh, thank you to um, uh, Tizzy Sylvester, George Bly, uh, Phil Spores, uh, Sarah Birch and uh, Mandy Kubi for joining us here uh, at Frog 21 for this panel debate uh, I hope you found it interesting and uh, thank you so much for taking the time to join me and answer some of my questions thank you thanks Mark thanks everyone thank you so, Mark, thank you again so much for hosting that panel discussion. And I, I know you'll probably right. be hanging around in the chat uh, for a while yet. So thank you again. Um, I think there's been some wonderful You're very welcome. there. OK, so um, we are going to take a very, very short comfort break now. Um, we will be back on at 10.15. So it's, it's very, very quick. The, We'll still be manning the chat, so if you've got any questions, just while we switch places and get ready for the beginning of the webinar, which is about including parents in their child's learning journey, but basically carrying on from all of those discussions that we've had so far, we're going to have a bit of a deeper dive into, into the FROG platform and show you what's possible and also showcasing some of the great things that schools have been doing, some of which you've already heard from today. So I will let Chris quickly switch over the screen. It says break time and I'll see you shortly. Hi, welcome back everybody. So um, this next session is um, part one of our three part in a series of webinars. So I'm hoping that Graham is going to be ready to join me on screen in just a second. Um, so what we're going to do in this uh, webinar is we're, we will be doing a, a walkthrough, taking you through a tour of our parent portal, the Frog platform, and then going through into our e-portfolios, as Mandy um, has just touched on in the panel discussion, about the power of that. So it'd be very useful, um, we think, to show you just what they're doing and, and what's actually available. So what you already have. And for those schools that don't have Frog that have joined us today, just a little bit of a flavour of one particular area which you might find useful. So I think really points to to recall from the morning so far um, uh, since lockdown there's been a, a much greater demand from parents and since we've moved to a hybrid learning approach uh, the demand from from parents has been more about getting involved in their child's work we've seen 
We've seen schools that ask parents to comment on the child work and take photographs from when they're at home. And that's then continued when they're back into the school for teachers doing that. Um, it's great news that we've moved, that we've, we've got more uh, emphasis on using technology as part of our overall teaching and learning strategy. It means, as Gareth mentioned, first thing uh, in the day, uh, a slightly higher workload at the beginning. It's like getting a rocket off the ground. You know, you leave, need that emphasis right at the beginning and that power. But once it's up there, um, it's just about keeping it up there and keeping it going and reaping those benefits. So some of the tools that we're going to showcase you to you today um, are going to be an overview of, of our parent portal. And just to show you some of those things you've heard uh, flexible and customizable, well, we'll show you what that means in practice. Um, obviously, the standard things like where to find my homework, where to find my lessons, you've seen the, the new way of our assignments that are about to be launched to be able to schedule a lesson, to be able to add a Teams link, to be able to add a Google Meet into your lesson, etc. But also, again, Mandy was talking about her ECAs, her extracurricular activities. So how are we communicating extracurricular activities parents how can parents get involved how can parents see what's going on how do we give them more visibility and how do we be more competitive in some areas um, some of our international schools obviously are competing for intake so it's important to make sure that our brand and our vision and our ethos also comes through to our parents um, so we'll, we'll take you through that and then we'll end on the e-portfolios. So Graham, would you be able to start by sharing your screen and then I can give everybody a little bit of a flavour of what Frog is, that th those that don't know. So if you could actually log into a platform and I'll um, just on yeah. those little buttons. Okay. Uh, and just to let everyone know, I'm logged in here as an administrator, so I've got certain features and we'll show those, but then we'll switch over and show you what it's like for a parent but i'm logged in right now as an admin uh, sorry lucy we um, yeah, that's yeah. great so um so everything that we're showing today just to make everybody aware everything that we're showing today will be filmed and we'll be sharing those videos afterwards so um you're, you're not going to miss anything but what we do is within frog we call frog the operating system and when you log in depending on whether you're a staff um, student, uh, governor or trustee, or a parent, you'll get a slightly different view. And that's up to you to choose how that looks and feels and the information that you want to share with each of those stakeholders. But I'm going to talk, well, Graham and I are going to talk about widgets and applications as we go through. So just to make you aware of what they are, on the right-hand side of our Frog platform, we have a little box here, and this is our applications. And applications are things that you've heard our guest speakers talk about. So things like the mark book, the, the ability to build curriculum, um, the um, reporting, analytics, and so forth. So there are a whole package of applications that's available to you. And then on the left hand side of the screen, here we have something called widgets. Now, Frog is built up of pages and websites. So we talk about sites and those are then shared with the relevant stakeholders. But widgets are actions that you would drag and drop onto a page. Um, so, for example, Graham's just dragged a text widget. He can put that onto a page. He could grab a media widget. He could put that onto a page. And that, allow, that would allow him to go and search media on YouTube, Khan Academy, and so on, and embed, um, embed really great content, but with stripping out all of those nasty little adwords and things like adverts and things like that. So it just keeps everything contained within the Frog platform. That's a very, very basic explanation of what Frog is. We also, um, at the center of the screen, there's a search bar and, and a big blue button beside it. And the big blue button, when we click on that, you will see, we talked about the Academy, we also, fill the platform with lots of pre-built things like um, we could have in there um, the e-portfolios, a student planner, a revision system, um, Duke of Edinburgh awards, extracurricular activity sites, clubs, um, trips, all sorts of things in there, 
student council they're all built but as with everything with frog as we've just shown you it's all customizable so you take what we've done and then you make it your own and you brand it up to your look your feel your language and everything about the school so um so we're not going to show you anything that isn't there or re re requires um an absolute genius uh, a, techno a technological guru to create it, although our Graham is, and everybody has been saying that throughout the day, and I think I need to wrap you in bubble wrap, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> so um, without further ado, let's log into our pre-built parent portal. I was all ready to do that. Now, what Lucy is saying is absolutely true. This is the out of the box or uh, platform that you can have. You, we'll work with you to tailor it, to, to make it your own, but nothing we're gonna be showing you is requiring additional development or somebody like me. All of this can be achieved uh, just with the training we'll be giving, we were able to provide for you. And I think that's really important to emphasize. Looking at this first page, the things that are on here, we've got, we've been working with schools for a number of years and we've been taking their ideas. They've been sharing them voluntarily, but they've been, we've been taking their ideas of what they're telling us they want parents to have immediate access to when they log in. So for instance, on this first page alone, first thing, let's have the child's timetable in there. What is your child going to be doing on a day by day basis? Much better than sort of being a paper timetable, sellotaped in the back of a textbook or something like that. So really easy in, in, uh, instant access. And of course, personal, not something generic. Then important or just as important is the idea of parent notices somewhere where parents know they can log in and see relevant school-based notices for them about their classes about their year groups that are going on and i've got a couple of examples here but alongside that so so you might imagine that the parent notices will be something dynamic that will be changing on a regular basis. But alongside that, maybe you'll have those links for advice and guidance that are important to you as a school to push out to parents. And this has exploded in the last couple of years into its own feature. And lots of schools are doing this. So we've got everything from, um, if I click on this, Alistair Smith's Parents as Learners, Alistair Smith, National UK Educator, worked with the FA on their education system systems and numerous schools and written textbooks worked with us to create an area listing all of the concerns or an awful lot of the concerns parents might have about their children and you know everything from writing and study habits to, to homework to attitudes to learning and cyberbullying and then behind each one of these you've got if I just click on anyone up here you've got advice and guidance and external links with further advice and guidance. But being in Frog, you as a school can take that and tailor that for yourself. So by providing that in a central area, you you can help show that you're supporting parents. And then there's nothing stopping you adding in other th links, links to external third party companies like uh, the, the parent system or the SOC system. You could have those built in. Now, that's up to you to customize we'll show you how to do that but then along the top we've got some of the more standard things that you've mentioned now phil earlier on in the, the panel was talking about my class and how you can use that as a teacher to see everything that's going on with the students in your school in your class but you can offer that same tool for parents. So here I am, I'm logged in as a parent with my fictitious account and my fictitious child, Abby, and I can see we've got built into here the frog progress module. So on the subjects that the teachers are assessing, I can have a quick look along this and I can see just from this menu alone how Abby's doing in English and maths and, and so on. Now, these are judgments based in progress around the curriculum, which has been broken down into learning objectives and teachers are able to make their judgments and add evidence along those. So if I go into Abby's maths and I can see here that 30% of her learning objectives are below target. So she's struggling here. Now, what does that mean? Well, I can scroll down and I can see an evidence of that judgment. I can expand it and I can see that the teacher has actually added something in there that I can have. A, I can take a look at 
I'll not bother for the moment. But then I've also got those extension resources and those learning resources for how I can support my child with a topic, with an area of math she's struggling with. So by providing that for parents, we're able to give them that level of, of involvement and engagement. And I think this really comes into, you'll see I've, uh, I've had to move. Someone's decided to start drilling above, uh, above my head. So I've had to move, but you're, you're also, this comes really into its own when you build your curriculum in Frog and start really assessing against your curriculum and sharing those gaps in attainment with both students and parents, doesn't it, Graham? Absolutely. And it's about that, that, the demand that Gareth was talking about right at the start about parents' expectations. They want to know what their children are doing because they want to be able to support their children in that learning. And so, and they know that this is happening in school, so we can provide that out for them. Now, if you like that, the, 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 there's that element uh, of progress. We can also display a larger timetable and even a timeline, which is a record of all of Abby's activities while she's in school. Any homework she's set, any homework she's handed in, anything else that's gone on in that way can be displayed there. But if I go up to the homework area now on the top here, we've got Abby's assignment calendar embedded in here as well. And obviously, I, say, I keep saying, Abby, if you've got multiple children, there's a switch and you, you can switch between your children to see their work. So you can see the work that Abby is being presented with and it's replicating that view. So sure enough, here's Abby's assignments. Here's her scheduled lessons. So I'm again able to support her during the day uh, through here in the assignment calendar. If I scroll along on the top bar on this particular design, we've got a number of other things, everything from letters home and, and school documents and abilities for parents to update their contact details and for them to be able to contact the school. But if I just jump over, we've talked in, in, in one area in particular a lot today about e-portfolios. Now, that can then be shared with parents through a system like this, where I can have it embedded in. I'm not going to spend too long on ePortfolios right now. We're going to loop back around because we want to go into that in a little bit more detail. So next, Lucy, if it's okay with you, I'm going to jump over to looking at the things that we can offer for co-curricular. Absolutely. I think uh, co-curricular is something that, as, as we heard from the Arbor and others, it's really important. Um, and and I think there's some areas in here that when we talked earlier about mental health and well-being and addressing some of those isolation issues, particularly around things like connecting people online, if you could show us some of those areas that might be useful to some of our schools to take on board. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm, I, I do want to show that. I want to show this one first, simply because I think this is a great example of of how school clubs can run. This is a Duke of Edinburgh award. So you can take all the information from the D of E uh, websites and information, but you can make it personal to your school. You can include sign up forms. And then my favorite bit about this is the school diaries where you can get award winners in your school to be diarizing what they're doing to help inspire the younger years. And I think that can be really powerful in there. Now, what Lucy just mentioned there and about sort of replicating and engaging, especially when, when children have been isolated, is the school clubs area. So, again, we have a template for this. You can take this and you can replicate it for every school in uh, every club in your school. And this is just an example. Now, the difference for something like this inside Frog to it being outside and just on the Internet is that security. Only children and parents in your school can see that it exists. There's nobody from outside is able to view this. They've got to have an account. So I go into here and I can have a public facing page, public in school, and I can see, you know, this This is my favorite one because it's Dog Walkers Club, uh, but I can have the photos. I've got a list of all the clubs here and I've got a button that allows me to join as a student that would allow me to join that club. And when I do join that club, it unlocks the members area and if I just go over to something like this, there, this is the space that's not visible to everybody, but I can have my notices, I can have my forms, I can share files and so on, and I can get a sense online of that community side of it. And as the teacher administrating this, I've got a couple of extra tools in here as well. But one of the things, and I'm just going to open up a separate one here, is 
replicating that physical meeting, that chance to talk uh, to each other face to face. We've got this example of a book club. So Frog's got an ebook reader built in, and thanks to the Gutenberg project by Google, there are something like 20,000 children's books available free for you to download and share in this way. But imagine you've taken a book that you want everybody to read for your book club, you add it into here, everybody reads it, and then you can jump over to the members area where you can discuss it and talk and have that engagement again, replicating that connectedness. Now, one thing uh, that we can then do, you, you see I've got a lot of photos on here and we've, we've got a timeline solution or a timeline where I can see everything that's going on. There's another example which might not be too relevant now, but it, it's, it's always worth sharing. If I close that down and it's school trips. Now, Gosforth Academy, uh, Adrian Tate, who's in the comments at the moment, shares this with us. And up until uh, COVID was taking a group of year 10 ICT students every year to, uh, to San Francisco, they were going to the Google headquarters, they were seeing everything that was going on around there. What Adrian would do and explain this to us and why we think it's such a great story is that he would share this site with the parents of the children going on the school trip explain the educational purpose around that the children could sign up on a uh, well the parents sorry could sign up on a form within here and then this area became that central point for everything to do with the school trip so the itinerary could be shared any important letters could be shared one little innovation Adrian put in was asking parents to take digital copies of the passport and the visa waiver form that was required and upload them to here. Now, all of this is mobile accessible. So should there be an emergency situation in the airport or the hotel, Adrian was able to access everybody's details. Lots of other things are going on in here, but when the children were actually out on the trip, the next stage came into play with this timeline where Adrian is able to use an app that we provide called Frog Snap. It's a free app for Android and Apple devices that allows you to take photos in the app and send them directly to an area in Frog. It does it securely and it also does it in such a way that if you take the photo in the app, when you send it to the platform, it deletes it off your phone. So there's no safeguarding concerns or worries about teachers using personal devices. So then everybody back at school is able to follow along on a day by day basis as these photos just slowly appear and you're able to see the trip. And from an engagement point of view with parents, I just think that that's, that's lovely, really. Parents, by the way, can also come on to these uh, uh, timelines and they can make their own comments. They can like photos that they've seen they can add on extra comments as well they can ask questions and they can see their children learning while they're out on that trip and hopefully we'll get back to school trips uh, like that before too long so i don't know if you've just seen that in the chat grain but adrian was saying they had a, a student that lost their passport on the plane on the way back oh, and luckily wow. there was a photograph obviously taken through frog snap so they could see where it was found. I think, thank you, Adrian, for sharing that. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, that gives me uh, a cold sweat, but at least the technology was there to back you up on that one. Um, it, it's nice to hear that as a, a real world example. Um, I've switched over to look at the ePortfolios. And again, in this fictitious parents account, they actually have two children, James and Abby. So we started with ePortfolios with this simple concept of having a space where children could make records of uh, their own learning notes, they could have learning reviews with their tutors, and they could have a place to celebrate their best work and share that at home. So you can get children, you can create use ePortfolios to develop what we call an authentic audience for parents to go on, see what the children are doing and, and put their thumbs up and, you know, say, this is great. I love seeing this, especially if you've got teenagers. I think that that's really important because it can be just the grunt before dinner and the grunt after dinner. And that's all you'll find out about how their school day's gone. We've done various and similar things with our primary focus, but the concept is the same. This is really just about design, but you can take something like uh, the ePortfolio and what you do is you create a unique area for that child that their parents can view and that their teachers can contribute to. So you get this following along of learning. 
Now, I mentioned progress before. That can also be embedded inside the portfolio. So every time a teacher adds some evidence, it can appear in a timeline in there too. And then children can record things like uh, their books that they're reading. So you can use this as a way of capturing all that soft data that doesn't really belong anywhere else, but can tell you so much about the child and what they're doing. So those are a couple of the out of the box examples. But what I'd like to do now with Lucy's help is show you just how a few no, of our no, schools- no, Before you do, Graham, Sorry. before you do, um, there's something that uh, I would like you to continue with before we go over into the e-portfolios. Um, and this is about communication methods with parents. So we've, you've shown the notice boards. And I think one of the things with the notice boards uh, from a parent's perspective is you do get a notification when there's a new notice. But also the other ways of uh, communicating with parents through the mobile app, um, through the push notifications, so that if um, there is some information on a new trip or a form to be filled in, like you've just shown, you could actually send a message out to the parents through the platform. But also things like if there is a problem in school, you need to be able to get the message out to the parents quickly and not just get the message out, but see who has interacted with it. A lot of schools will use their own internal messaging systems, but not necessarily know who has read it. It may have delivered, but I think that's one of the, the nice things that we could show in our, in our messaging system, which is just part of Frog. We absolutely could. And thank you for interrupting me on this, because this is really quite a crucial one. So as Lucy was saying, we've got the notice boards. Now we've got the uh, a second app called MyFrog, which is a way of teachers being able to uh, let students know of the homework that they've been set. And obviously, of course, we've got a parent view built into there and you can demonstrate so much more. You can load the whole parent portal into the app as well. So whenever a piece of work is set to a student, that student and their parent gets a ping on their phone telling them that that work has been set and they can see that homework and actually the child can hand that work in on their phone as well. But what schools said is we really like this. We want this idea of this messaging and seeing as we've got the app, could we give them the ability to send messages via the app too? So we'd already built the technology. So really it was just a case of providing that interface. And that's exactly what we did just over uh, about 18 months ago. This messaging tool within here lets me send a message. I can just quickly click new message. Uh, yeah, seven parents evening. And here parents dot, dot, dot. So I can construct a simple text message with obviously a title and then I can come down to here and I can search for a group there's my year seven now that would if I left it at that that would actually send it just to the children of year seven no good for parents evening what I can do here instead is I can choose to send it to them and their parents or just their parents, which I think is probably appropriate in this case. I can add links to websites. I can add links to areas within Frog. I could add links to documents, all built into here and clicking send. It will send that message immediately to everybody's phone and it will send it without any cost to you or the parent receiving it. It also has the ability, and I showed it just as Lucy was talking, the inbox inside the platform where you can consume those messages as well. So if a parent doesn't have a smartphone, they can still see that message. But here's the thing, because they're getting that message in a frog system within the frog ecosystem, we know if they've read that message and we can therefore tell you if that. So let me just open up uh, this example only because I've got a few in here. Here's a, uh, a message I sent out to about a staff meeting to all these parents. I can see which parents have the Frog app installed. I can see who's read it and I can see who's deleted it. And again, because we know this information, we're letting you know, I can also tell you how they've consumed that message, whether it's on the desktop or in the app. Now, in this example, there's quite a few parents have not read this message. This might be really something quite urgent. I might have only sent it out in a short amount of time. So what I can do is I can export this as a list, as a spreadsheet, give it to my office staff and say, it's really important we contact the other, uh, the other parents about this message. 
So nobody gets left out, nobody gets left behind. But the schools who've been using this have shown us that as the parents are driven to the app and are engaged anyway, following their child's homework, logging into the parents portal, having this messaging tool is really helping them get any communications out to parents. Graham, before um, we, uh, lovely, by the way, walk through of uh, the communications, uh, before we move on to showing you what good looks like and some of those beautiful e-portfolios, a um, couple of questions that have popped mm. up. And one is around um, parent logins. So one thing that we didn't suggest, we didn't explain to anybody was about how the parent-child relationship works, how it comes in from the MIS and how we make sure that everything is safe and secure within the platform. Would you be able to give a quick explanation of that? And then I'll ask you another question. <laughs> okay, no problem. I tell you what, I'll minimize that just for now because I haven't got anything I can easily illustrate for MIS yeah. integration. But Frog is populated. All of the users come from your managed information system. And that relationship that you've set up between the parent and the child already exists. So when Frog imports those users, it maintains that connection. Now, uh, that therefore means you don't have to do any additional setup. And those accounts for parents are generated automatically. So much so that in the past, we would have schools download, we can, we can show you how to do this, but downloading all their users as a spreadsheet and then doing mail merges and setting passwords and sending it back. These days, we don't recommend that. We've got a standard letter template that I'll, I can share with everybody. It's, it's shared on our community that tells parents they go to uh, the Frog login page, they there's a forgot password link, they click that, they pop in their email address and Frog will send them a, a link to reset or set their password for them. So at no point are you having to deal with personal data or mail merging or anything complicated. It all just happens for you automatically. Uh, so yeah, it, it, it's a very simple process. There was um, another question, and this is partially related to um, Frog Snap within the ePortfolios. So um, basically, the concern here is ePortfolios can be set to be shared with um, students to be shared with the parent of that student if you wish to, or could be a trip portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the questions was, if it's a, a shared portfolio, um, say a class portfolio, a shared portfolio, how would you get away um, with a child taking a photograph of another child and putting it on a secure platform? So there's a couple of things you could if you've got any concerns children can only have view access to these but this being frog we can also we if you are going to allow children to upload there is a management tool built into the timelines which is what we've been demonstrating so uh this is this is an example of it you could embed it on a page or you can access it via the manage timeline link in here so quite often if there is that concern what I'll actually advise teachers to do, and I can help you set this up, is you will have a general timeline that is only visible to teachers. And every photo that comes into here, you can then approve or reject uh, and so on. So I can go in and I've got a number of controls. So I could delete an image that I felt was inappropriate and wouldn't share with everyone. I can edit it, which would allow me to approve it. I could just hide it from the timeline which actually I think is probably the best, the better option to delete because the benefit of hiding it from the timeline is nobody will know about it. I can then pick up the phone, speak to mum and dad, bring them in for a meeting, and then I can expose the inappropriate photo and we can have that conversation. But I've got that protection. If I'm going to allow students to be contributing to a timeline, I'd probably build that in and it's a simple two-step process. I think it's a really important thing for when you're thinking about launching shared sites, sites to parents or e-portfolios to parents, what is it that you actually want them to see um, and who has access? And obviously Frog is safe and secure and locked down, uh, uh, et cetera, but it's, a lot of this is down to what do you internally deem as uh, how you want to share things within the Frog platform? Exactly. And one of the things I'm I'm quite keen on when we talk about children, you know, effectively cyberbullying. Let's face it, that's what it is. I'd rather they make that mistake in Frog. 
you know, an 11 year old doing something foolish, I want the, that mistake to be picked up in Frog, corrected by the teachers and make sure that they've learned their lesson and will never do that again. If they do yeah. that on social media, on the internet, that's out there forever. And it's you end up creating two victims, the original uh, bullying victim and the child who was just stupid and, and made a mistake. Well, I think that's, uh, as somebody just said, that's very well said, it, it is a learning curve. And, and obviously, you know, people expect their children not just to learn about um, curriculum at school, but life skills too. Okay, right. I think we've answered all the questions, Graham. Okay. Can you please show us what good looks like? We've been promising this now several yes. times. <laughs> um, yeah, I've just got a tour of four different schools using ePortfolio as an increasingly inter interesting and creative ways. And the first, we'd already heard from Mandy on the panel. Uh, this is what they're doing for all of their year groups. And it's that concept of my best work that we were looking at in one of those templates that we had earlier. But they wanted this to be a multi-year approach. So there's a year three, there's a year four and five and onwards up to year nine. And as the students are going through the school, they've got a different page where they're adding on their material as they go. So obviously, what you would expect to see in year three is going to be quite different to what you see in year nine, but rather than having some sort of endless scroll where you've got to get all the way to the bottom to see the stuff they did a year ago, now you can see it each on individual pages and you get that sense of development and you get you build that pride that the children have in there. So that's a, just a really nice example of something. Now, the next one was a situation the Edron School in Mexico showed us that they were doing. And I just think this is just visually lovely. But when the children and their parents are adding to their child's e-portfolio, they want their teacher to know that they've done that. So Edron prepared all of these cartoon images of their staff, popped them in here, and the children, the idea is simple. They add something to their best work section, and then they want to show this to Miss Emily. So they click that button. Miss Emily sent an email with a link that's uh, for that e-portfolio. She can go on, she can like, she can comment. And it, it's, a, it's a really nice little feature. And then there's some of the examples of the work underneath. So then taking that to the next stage, and, and Gareth mentioned this in his introduction, but I'd just like to go into it in a little bit more detail. Finton House School in London, uh, they were starting their journey with e-portfolios when COVID hit, and they were just starting to experiment and use them. And they realized that they could use them to keep that all-important teacher-child link going. So behind, when the children and their parents would log in, they would, they had packed out sites full of resources of what you're going to do on a Monday at this time and so on, giving their children that all important structure that they were missing out on by not being in school. But then building onto that with all of those resources was the use of the e-portfolios. And the children were asked to take photos of their work and submit them in for the teachers to see. And we've got this lovely example. I've, I've blurred the faces for data protection, obviously but children holding up their work, parent taking that photo and it being sent up for their teacher to approve. And as Gareth was talking about earlier, once lockdown was eased in the UK, this was flipped because parents were then wanting to see what their children were doing during the day. So teachers would then take the photos of the children with their work, send them in. It, the expectation wasn't every child, every lesson, every uh, every day, but it was just to build up that thing. We don't want to turn teachers into, you know, just there for photography purposes, but it was a lovely way of keeping that homeschool communication going and maintaining it as well. And then finally, uh, just a slightly different example, Canterbury School in the Canary Islands is an all through school and they start at nursery. And in fact, they've got pre-nursery classes too. And again, here's all the work that we need you to do. Here's all the resources. Here's your e-portfolios, you your older years, where you're going to be adding your resources and your best work. And we're going to be sharing that at home. But for the nursery side of it, they had something that they wanted to try doing called a daily diary. So we worked with them a bit on how could we do this, and we settled on Frog's form system, which, again, allows you, it's a very secure tool. Teachers are able to search for a student, 
fill in a whole bunch of information, you know, in terms of the very little ones here, did they eat everything they needed for lunch? Uh, do we need you to bring something tomorrow? Um, and, you know, how have you been getting on during the day? Uh, so you're able to fill all that in. And on submission to that, when you submit that in, it then goes into a list. So you get this diary list here of everything that, in this case, this uh, this fictitious student, Carla, has uh, how she's been getting on. And for the parents to then reach out to the teachers, rather than sharing emails, rather than having an external system, which is no good for team teaching apart from anything else, we've got a daily diary contact form. So you search for a teacher, you send, you fill in your message and you hit submit and that emails the teacher directly. So it's just that improving that communication, but having a communication log at the same time. And that, that was the last of the, the, the really special ones I wanted to show for the moment. The really special ones. Graham, that's yeah. been um, really great. And I think um, the, we, we have two more webinars in our series. So we have one on Tuesday and then one on Thursday next week. And we're really carrying on through some of the themes that we've seen throughout today. Um, and we, we've touched on sharing um, homework and assessment and building curriculum within the platform slightly today. But our next webinar on Tuesday, we're really going to be diving into um, addressing gaps in attainment um, and where do we where do we actually use frog to help fill some of those gaps and then on Thursday next week we'll be looking a little bit further at the professional development platform so um, hopefully you can join Graham and myself for some of those um, I think we've answered all the questions now through the chat um, and it's so I would just like to to sum up. So thank you, Graham. I'm just going to sum up, and uh, we'll, we will we will be in the hanging round in the the chat for, for some time after we close out today's conference. Um, and so that just leaves me to thank all of our speakers today. Um, it's been absolutely uh, wonderful for everybody to have heard all of your thoughts and your experiences. Uh, and I'm hoping that everybody's taking something away from today. All of the recordings, as I said, will be shared uh, with, with all of our guests and made available to you because there may be people that within your schools would like to see what we've been doing and what other schools have been doing. Um, I hope you can join us again for another webinar and I really do hope that you've enjoyed Frog 21 today um, feel free to shout about it on hashtag frog 21 so i'm now going to close out today's conference as i said the team is still here to chat for a couple of minutes if anybody's got any further questions but thank you so much for participating and we wish you all well thank you goodbye